Okay, so this first teaching that we're going to go through, it's called The Full Salvation of Jesus Christ. And this one is going to be a word study on Soteria, Yeshua, and Sozo. And those are three, um, three prominent salvation words that we find when we read the Bible. Okay. And I'm going to skip the testimony. So one of the challenges, like when you look at the church in general, you don't see a lot of people walking in a high degree of victory in life. And that's unfortunate because, you know, Jesus paid for us to have a full salvation and he paid for us to have a life of victory. And the problem is that most Christians, they're just getting very little benefit from their salvation. And the reason for that is because the church is emphasizing you know, teaching on forgiveness of sins. They're focusing on eternal life. They're focusing on holiness and they're focusing on love. And these are all good things, but it's not a complete picture. And so what we need is we need teaching about all the other things because Jesus paid for a huge portfolio of benefits. You know, of course, the most important part is eternal life salvation, but there's everything else that we need for this present life is also paid for. So what we want to do in this teaching is we want to learn about all these other benefits from salvation. Actually, they're, they're literally aspects of salvation. And um, so we'll get like a picture of a pie and half of the pie is eternal life benefit. And then the other pieces of the pie are going to be the benefits for this present life. And also, you know, Jesus came to set us free from all the works of the devil. And the church is focused on sin and death uh, mostly. And we want to teach about all the other aspects. You know, because the devil loves to oppress us with, you know, he likes to entice us into sin. And, and the church talks about that a lot. But he's also responsible for sickness, death, destruction, curse, theft, mental illness, demon possession, oppression, poverty, strife, evil weather, deadly weather, chaos, problems in life. And you can just make your list as long as you want. So the de devil's responsible for all these things. And so we need to come to learn this full salvation so we can get greater and greater benefits, which God wants us to have. So in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so we're going to expand on this word sozo, which is the saved word as well as the other two words, Yeshua and Soteria. Okay, and the, the Bible also says that Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. So in 1 John 3, 8, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay, and so unfortunately, many people, many Christians are being run over by the devil. You know, they're obviously their sins are forgiven. They know that um, they're they're not afraid of death. They know they're going to heaven when they die and all that's good stuff. But for this present life, many tend to be weak. And so the devil oppresses Christians with as much sickness as other people because they haven't come to know that sickness is of the devil. And they have authority over it and so forth. But Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. And so if we will come to believe in Jesus for full salvation, we can be protected from all these works of the devil. We can be preserved from all the works of the devil, rescued from them, you know, kept safe from them. And that's what we want. Okay, and then another important thing is in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, it says, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is is the day of salvation. Okay, so, you know, back in the Old Testament, they were looking forward, like out there in the distant future somewhere, there is a day of salvation coming. Well, we're living in that time now. You know, that time has come and is present tense for us. And so now it's not like we need to wait for all these aspects of salvation, but they're present tense available. Jesus already paid for every aspect of salvation. So when we become strengthened in all the aspects of salvation that belong to us, then those are benefits and protections that we can experience now. Because it is now is the accepted time and now is the day of salvation. 
So we never again have to wait. Like anything you can find in salvation, you don't have to wait on God to bring it because it's already it's already available today. Amen? Now is the day of salvation. So whatever's in that word salvation, these three words, that belongs to you today. And so by faith, we need to lay hold of these things. You know, I like to think of it, you know, there's a, a cloud up in the sky and there's a cloud that has Bobby's name written on it. There's one with Bridget's name and Kathy's name and Mitch's name and Joe's name. And, and Dennis's name and whoever else may be on the call. So, you know, we've got like a spiritual bank account, like up in that cloud up there and everything's finished. Everything pertaining to salvation, it's in there. Everything pertaining to life and godliness has already been given. And if it's already been given, we're not waiting on God to make a decision whether to give us something or not give us something, but by faith, by knowing what's in our spiritual bank account in that cloud floating around up there, by faith, we can retreat from that. We can make a withdrawal. And so um, we will increase in faith by going through this, getting strengthened in these aspects of salvation, and then making them into a confession. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with the word soteria. So this is a New Testament. Um, it's a Greek word, so it's from the New Testament. And the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was mostly written in Hebrew. And um, we're going to read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so this passage, this is, uh, it's, you know, it's a couple of things. It's the law of faith. It tells us how faith works. It tells us how salvation works. So salvation works by by doing two things. You know, first, you have to believe something in your heart. You have, to, you have to know what has Jesus done for me. You have to know something about Jesus, know what he did for us, know what he paid for. So you have to believe something in your heart. Okay, but it's it's not sufficient to to believe. It's great that you believe. But you have to apply confession in order for that belief to be manifested as a truth in your life. So you have to believe in your heart something about salvation or something about the good will of God. And then you have to confess with your mouth. And so when you believe in your heart and when you confess with your mouth, then salvation will be manifested. But not until you do both. So you have to both believe and confess. And so... Um, this passage has two salvation words in it. The first one is the word uh, sozo, and the second one is soteria. So on this page, we're going to look at the word soteria. So we believe in our heart what Jesus has done and confess with our mouth, then we will receive salvation. So what we need to be believing are all the different aspects of soteria salvation. And we need to be confessing all the different aspects of soteria salvation. And then when we do that, then those aspects will come true. Okay, so soteria is salvation in the eternal sense. You know, so the forgiveness of sins and the receiving of eternal life with God. But soteria also means to save um, or the act of saving. So to save, that could be like um, a physical thing. Like um, Dennis was saved from crashing his car when it started to spin and instead it curved around the bend. <laughs> you know, complete miracle, right? So he was saved. That was a physical salvation. You know, the the people in the boat with Jesus, they were saved from drowning when he stopped the wind and the waves. So, so they were physically saved. Okay, so you know, just think about any aspect of life where you need to be saved. It could be, you know, I need I at one point I needed to be saved from addiction and I was saved from addiction. Other times I needed to be saved from accidents and I was saved from accidents. And so there's you can apply things of the soul. You can apply physical things. Just any act of saving is included in soteria. So um, combined with that, rescue. You know, so soteria means to rescue. So we, part of our salvation benefit is that we are, we have a guaranteed rescue. We have guaranteed deliverance. We have preservation. And preservation, this is the highest form of protection. Because, you know, if you're, being saved from something, if you're being rescued, if you're being delivered, then that means something bad is, has already happened or is about to happen. And so you're having to be rescued from that. 
Okay, so there's already danger at hand. So that's not the best case scenario. The best case scenario is preservation. You know, so soteria, you know, with the mouth, confession is made unto preservation. So if you are preserved, then that means nothing's going to happen to you. Like you are untouchable. Amen. If you are preserved, you are untouchable by the evil one. You are untouchable by accident, untouchable by calamity, untouchable by disaster, untouchable by sickness, untouchable by spirits of infirmity. You are just preserved and kept safe and sound and unharmed. And so rescue and deliverance aren't necessary if you're preserved. So let's read the Webster Dictionary definition of this. The act, um, preservation means the act of preserving or keeping safe. The act of keeping from injury, destruction, or decay as the preservation of life or health. Okay, the preservation of buildings from fire or decay, the preservation of grain from insects, the preservation of fruit or plants. When a thing is kept entirely from decay or nearly in its original state, we say it is in a high state of preservation. Okay, so some aspects of this definition from Webster are talking about um, you know, other things besides people. But for us, you know, preservation means being kept safe, kept from injury, kept from destruction, kept safe from decay, having preservation of life and health. Amen. So that means we are just in perfect safety. Okay. Soteria also means um, health. You know, so we are entitled not just to be healed, but we are entitled to walk in health. And so he, it's great that Healing is available to us, but even better than healing is just walking in health and never needing healing. Like personally, I don't ever want to need healing ever in my life. I just want to walk in health. I am walking in health and I and I will continue to walk in health. And I make sure that I have a confession that includes all these different things. Amen. So all of these things are aspects, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these things are aspects of soteria salvation. That means all of these are paid for. All of these belong to you. All you have to do is believe them and confess them, and you will experience them. Amen? Okay, and just to reiterate, how does salvation work? You have to believe in your heart the truths of salvation from Jesus. Okay, so we just saw these truths right here. Secondly, you must confess these truths with your mouth, and then they will come true. So without confession or without some sort of action tied to your belief, then then nothing's going to happen. There has to be some work associated with faith, the work of confession or the work of an action that confirms your faith. You know, so one of those things has to be present in order to get salvation to manifest. Okay, and this mechanism that's described in Romans 10, it's true for every aspect of salvation. It's not limited to forgiveness of sins and eternal life, but any aspect of soteria salvation that you want, all these things are activated the same way, belief and confession. Amen. Okay, so then what you can do with this is just do a simple confession. And you can do much more than what I have written here, but basically you want to be believing these things and then confess. So I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I have salvation, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life with God. I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I shall be rescued and delivered from all harm. And all harmful things cannot touch me. Evil things cannot touch me. Sickness and disease cannot touch me. I just abide in a state of constant deliverance from all harm. And harm will not and shall not touch me. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I am preserved and protected from all evil. Evil cannot touch me. Evil will not touch me. Sickness cannot touch me. Injury cannot touch me. Calamity, disaster, curse. These things cannot touch me. Spirits of infirmity cannot touch me. I am preserved from all harm. I am preserved from all evil. I am protected with perfect protection of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I abide in perfect safety at all times. I abide in perfect safety. I am untouchable by the devil. I am untouchable by the works of the devil. I am untouchable by sickness, disease. I'm untouchable by injury, accident, calamity. I cannot be touched. I cannot be harmed. I am preserved from all harm. I abide in perfect safety and I abide in the full salvation, preservation, protection of God at all times, always. 
I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I am healed and I am whole and I prosper in health. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe in health. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed and whole. Not only do I walk in health, but I give away healing and I heal the sick. I heal them all. So Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that through you, I have eternal life salvation. Thank you, Jesus, that through you, I am saved and kept safe from all harmful and evil things. Thank you, Jesus, that should ever a, a, a trying situation arise, I shall always be rescued. I shall always be delivered. Deliverance belongs to me. So thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Father. And thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for preserving me from all harm. Thank you for preserving me from all evil. Thank you for keeping me in a place of safety at all times. And thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes I am healed and whole. Thank you, Jesus, that you bore my sicknesses so I just simply walk in health. I walk in health in my body. I walk in health in my soul. And I will live a long life with strength, with health, with comfort in my body and in my soul. Thank you and amen. Amen. Okay, so that's what, you know, that's what we do to experience salvation. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth and then all these aspects, they shall be manifested. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so the next one is the word Yeshua. So Yeshua salvation, this is a Hebrew word. It's from the Old Testament and it's actually um, a variation of the same word as Jesus's name in Hebrew. So there's Yeshua as in the noun of salvation and then there's Yeshua as in the name of Jesus. And um, it's the same root word with a slight variation. One is his name, which means he will save. And the other, Yeshua, we're going to go through that in a minute. It describes our salvation. Okay, and in Psalm 91, verse 14 to 16. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I will show him my Yeshua. Okay, so we're going to look at this word. And what we see in Psalm 91 is throughout the entire Psalm, God is talking about physical salvation. And, and specifically, there are some requirements. It's people who love and trust in him. So there are some requirements for the promises of God to come true. And in the case of Psalm 91, the requirements we see there are loving him and trusting him. And so when we love him and trust him, the entire Psalm 91, it's not, not one verse in there is about eternal life. Every verse in that passage, in that Psalm, is about physical salvation. That would be salvation for this present life. Amen? And so God has paid for so much more than just eternal life. He's paid for us to be absolutely protected and blessed in this life. Okay, so what does Yeshua mean? Yeshua means salvation. And so this would be, you know, in the context of Psalm 91, it's specifically salvation from physical things. And if we, if we were to read Psalm 91, you would see it's salvation from enemies, salvation from violence, salvation from disease, salvation from plague, salvation from, you know, any... Any evil thing you could think of, um, there's salvation from that in Psalm 91. So all those things belong to us. All those aspects, any aspect of physical salvation belongs to us. It's part of what Jesus paid for. Okay, Yeshua means deliverance. So we are promised deliverance. If we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we shall experience deliverance. And we talked about some testimonies earlier, examples of deliverance. And that deliverance, it could be carried out in a number of ways. It could be an angel that carries out the deliverance. So, for example, in Psalm 91, it says his angels are in charge of us. So it could be an angel. It could be some other mechanism of deliverance. But it is a promise, and it belongs to us. Okay, aid. So our salvation includes having God's help in everything that we do. And so, you know, if we want to experience that, we need to believe that that part of our salvation includes having God's aid, having God's assistance, having God's help. And if we believe in these things, and if we confess it with our mouth, then our life will go much more easily. You know, so instead of trying to accomplish everything or do your work on human power, 
You can do your work and do your ministry and whatever you're doing in life, you can do it all with God's help and assistance, having his aid in all things. You know, victory is part of this word, Yeshua. Victory. I mean, that's amazing. So we, you know, when we look at, when we look at Christianity, we should be seeing people living amazingly victorious lives. And that is, I mean, the devil, you know, he wants to come against us, but we should get victory in every situation of life. We should live from glory to glory to glory, from victory to victory to victory. You know, there's no example, except when Jesus allowed himself to be defeated so that he could give us salvation. Jesus was never defeated at anything. And Jesus is our example. Jesus is the firstborn of many brothers. Jesus was the first son of God, and we are the second sons of God. And so we are to live lives of victory, living constantly from victory to victory to victory. And so we want to establish um, belief in victory and confession of victory, and then we're going to increase in our experience of victory. Salvation, Yeshua salvation also includes walking in health and, and being, you know, um, receiving healing or giving healing. So healing and health are part of the definition of Yeshua salvation. Okay, then also prosperity is part of Yeshua. So our salvation includes prosperity. That means that all of our needs should always be met with an abundance left over for every good work. That is a Bible definition of being rich or a Bible definition of prosperity is when all of your needs are always met with an abundance left over for every good work. That is the kind of prosperity that belongs to us. Okay, and then even this word welfare. Welfare is part of Yeshua, and this is a phenomenal word. So I want to read the definition from Webster. Welfare means exemption from misfortune, exemption from sickness, exemption from calamity, exemption from evil. And that is amazing. It also means welfare means the enjoyment of health and the common blessings of life. Welfare means prosperity, happiness, and this is with respect to persons. Okay, that, that is a phenomenal aspect of salvation. Exemption from misfortune. Okay, what would we also call that? Redemption from curse, right? Jesus redeemed us from curse. Jesus paid for us to be healed. Jesus bore our sicknesses. So it's no surprise that welfare includes exemption from sickness. We should just walk in health. Amen? We are exempt from sickness, exempt from calamity, exempt from evil. And, and it's not just that we're inventing things by digging into definitions of words, but Jesus literally, he bore our sicknesses, he took stripes on his back, and he paid for our healing. Jesus literally redeemed us from curse. And misfortunes, calamities, and acts of evil, those are curses. We are redeemed from that. So everything lines up here. And so if we will believe in these things and confess them, then we will have a phenomenal full salvation experience. Amen? So you can make a really long confession with Psalm 91, but let's just do a short one. So I believe in Jesus. Therefore, with long life and full salvation, I will be satisfied. I will live a long life with perfect protection and safety. No evil shall befall me. Nothing shall by any means harm me for my father's angels are in charge of me and they protect me in all of my ways. And in the hands of angels, I am bared up and I will not dash my foot against a stone. Nothing shall by any means harm me. I declare in the name of Jesus, I will live a long life. I will live a victorious life. I will live from victory to victory to victory. I will live a satisfying life for it is written for it is written with long life. I will satisfy him. So I thank you, Father, for a long, victorious and satisfying life. I declare in the name of Jesus, I will live a long life with prosperous health. I will never get sick. I will never be injured. I will never be weak. I will never be withered. I will live a long life with perfect, prosperous health, with youth renewal day by day, with strength, with sound mind, a sound body. I will live a long life with a prosperous soul, and I shall be filled with love and joy and peace at all times always. Thank you, Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that I will live a long life with welfare, with good welfare, with good fortune, with health, with happiness, with prosperity. I shall be satisfied because I believe in Jesus. I am. I declare in the name of Jesus that I am exempt 
from misfortune. I will never experience misfortune. I will not experience calamity. I will not experience evil for I am redeemed from all curse. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so you could go on and on and on. But basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a confession using this last verse from Psalm 91 and then pulling into it all these different aspects of salvation that we find in the word Yeshua. Amen. And, and, and just think about it. You know, this is also Jesus's name. And these are the things that he does. When you read the Gospels, um, the, the next word that we're going to look at is the word sozo. And it's used 110 times. And in passage after passage after passage, you see Jesus doing a variety of saving works uh, of all different kinds. You see him, you know, saving from physical events. You see him delivering people from demons. You, you see them uh, stopping the storm to save their lives. You see him uh, aiding and helping people. You see victory. You see prosperity, the payment of taxes, the multiplication of food, different things like that. So, you know, he literally lives up to his name and delivers us all of these benefits. And our responsibility is to know this, to believe it, and to confess it, and then we're going to experience it. Amen? Okay, um, unfortunately, I, I do have, I will have to stop. We're at 1.30 right now, but we're going to pick up next time, and we'll see Sozo Salvation. We'll take a look at this word. We'll look at the Sozo Pi, and this is all of the full salvation that belongs to us. Then after that, we can do a confession um, from Sozo, of the word Sozo. Then we can look at some examples of physical life salvation. And then we can talk about some of the benefits of eternal life salvation. And I think we probably already know this, but some of us have recently lost loved ones. So it's good to take a look at the benefits that they're experiencing because they're now upstairs in the presence of God. And there's huge benefits associated with that. And so this will be comforting for anyone who's recently lost a loved one. Okay, so any comments or questions so far?